Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we'll be going through a practice question related to the integumentary system. As we recall, as we go through the podcast, we're going through each section on the FSBPT content outline, and today is no different. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that the crash course, the PT crash course is starting up this week. We always start that three weeks before every test day. We have a version for PTs. We also have a version for PTAs, but you'll want to make sure to jump in. We have asynchronous content, so some pre-recorded material, as well as live content where we take you through practice questions. We've got some fun bonuses on the way, including how to structure your brain dump and how to strategize on test day to take advantage of every opportunity that you're given. Want to make sure that you have all the tools necessary so that you can succeed on test day. So be sure to check that out. You can find out all the information over at ptfinalexam.com. And if you want all of our cheat sheets, tips, tricks, all the info you need to crush the exam, be sure to sign up for our email list over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can find out and stay up to date with all of our latest course offerings. All right, so today is a practice question related to the integumentary system. As you recall in the podcast, we're going through each system on the FSBPT content outline. This is according to the most up to updated FSBPT content outline. They are updating this for 2024, which will change some of the proportion of questions or change the number of questions, but not the proportion. So these questions are still extremely pertinent if you're listening to this in the future as well. Although if you're listening to it in the future, it means you're listening to it right now. No, <laughs> anyway, if you're listening to it after our record recording date, uh, which is here early July of 2023, you'll still find the information extremely pertinent. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our practice questions. So again, nine to 12 questions related to the integumentary system. This is related to integ examination. I'll read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. A patient with localized scleroderma is most likely to display which of the following groupings of clinical manifestations? A patient with localized scleroderma is most likely to display which of the following groupings of clinical manifestations? One, increased skin flexibility, excessive joint range of motion. Two, hypersensitivity of peripheral nerves, hypertrophy of skin at hands and elbows. Three, hypervascularization of fingers and toes, heat intolerance. And four, tight facial skin, shiny skin, loss of normal skin folds. So again, a patient with localized scleroderma is most likely to, to display which of the following groupings of clinical manifestations. One, increased skin flexibility, excessive joint range of motion. Two, hypersensitivity of peripheral nerves, hypertrophy of skin at hands and elbows. Three, hypervascularization of fingers and toes, heat intolerance. And four, tight facial skin, shiny skin, loss of normal skin folds. So localized scleroderma is characterized primarily by tightness in the skin, and this affects most of the time, affects the face and hands primarily. And so therefore, the correct answer is number four, tight facial skin, shiny skin, loss of normal skin folds. And this is because the scleroderma, it's a, essentially a scarring process that occurs in the skin. And so the, the, the uh, what do you want to say, the epidermis, the hypodermis, epidermis, everything starts to scar together and you typically get, uh, you start with some atrophy and then it does progress to hypertrophy and then back to atrophy again. So there are some stages of scleroderma, but typically speaking, you get a significant skin tightness, which affects the skin of the face and the hands primarily, which would then reduce range of motion at those joints. Also, one of the things you'll see with facial skin tightness is that it, it tends to create a pinched nose, thin lips, and a almost like they're baring their teeth all the time. So I've got a friend who's got scleroderma, and that's precisely the, the presentation is that, uh, yeah, you just get this excessive skin tightness, which then does lead to loss of range of motion at the hands, the elbows, uh, the feet, the toes, especially in the extremities. Now, it is possible to have something called diffuse scleroderma, or diffuse, uh, what is it called? Dif scleroderma is primarily talking about the, the epidermis and the hypodermis, but the systemic sclerosis is where you get the scarring that occurs not just on the skin, but also in the internal organs as well. And so it's, it's much more severe, can affect the gastrointestinal system, uh, certainly the esophagus, esophageal tissues, uh, skin thickening clearly. 
Uh, there's lots of gastrointestinal complications that come with that. In this case, this particular case, we're talking about localized scleroderma. One of the other characteristics of scleroderma is they have a high propensity for Raynaud phenomenon. So Raynaud phenomenon, that's where you have that hyper vasoconstriction of the fingers and toes, due to, usually due to cold exposure, some type of, of instigating event, almost always cold, will cause, the hyper, cause a hyperconstriction of the vascular, vascular tissue in the fingers and toes. Therefore, it leads to that significant skin blanching, cyanosis. And then eventually, once it does come back, then it creates the erythema of the hands and toes. It's just kind of a bad cycle for folks who are, who are especially sensitive to cold. They get that Raynaud phenomenon, which again is, has a high correlation with, with the localized scleroderma. Uh, and then the other thing, the other incorrect answer here, hypersensitivity of, of peripheral nerves, rather it's hyposensitivity. They lose sensation at the hands and feet simply because of the, the, all the sclera, all the, the vascular scarring that occurs. Therefore, it will result in damage to the peripheral nerves as well, creating peripheral neuropathy. So the characteristics, the key take-home point, localized scleroderma is likely to result in tight, shiny skin, skin inflexibility, and then the Raynaud phenomenon and peripheral neuropathy. Those are the key characteristics of localized scleroderma. All right, so there you go. There's your question for today. Be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we have. And in the meantime, if you haven't yet, please leave us a review over on Google Play, iTunes, or Spotify. It helps a ton. It takes just a moment. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Stay safe out there. Keep a grin on your chin. We'll cram fist pumps all around. 